Okay, so in this video I want to talk about the distinction between parametric, uh, uh, parametric and non-parametric tests in the context of Pearson's moment correlation coefficient or Spearman's rank correlation coefficient in the context of parametric or non-parametric tests and hypothesis tests. And parametric in the context of hypothesis tests. I'm going to do a couple of examples and a couple of examples from past papers and talk a little bit about the differences between these two in the context of parametric and non-parametric and hypothesis testing. Okay, so first thing to say is it really depends on what data we're kind of dealing with. The parametric version Um, is the product moment correlation coefficient. It actually assumes that the data is bivariately normally distributed. Normally distributed. Distributed. And with Spearman's rank, there's no such assumption. It's the so Spearman's. There's no such assumption. That's the non-parametric test. Okay, I think we need to look at a few examples. But before I do that, there are certain uh, instances where clearly Spearman's rank is the only option. For example, if the the data is inherently ordinal in nature so for example if we say we had a, a dancing competition we had two judges x and y and then we had a certain number of contestants a b c d and e and judges x and y were asked to rank them in uh, rank these contestants in a particular order with one being the highest and well, it's arbitrary, but let's say one is the highest, so the, the best is X thinks the best is B, and they think the second best is D, and they think the third best is C or 5. Uh, whereas Y thinks the first is D, second is B, three, four, five, a ranking like that. The, the, the data is inherently ordinal in nature. And therefore, because of that, uh, then Spearman's rank is our only option. OK, so now let's use GeoGebra to actually look at uh, the two measures and the distinction between them. Uh, I've put some data in here and we, we can see definitely what's called an association or what uh, many people call association in that as one data value goes up, the next one goes up after that and so on. It, as X increases, Y increases on all of them. So we've actually got a, product, a Spearman's rank there of 1, because as 1 increases, the other one decreases. But we don't have a linear relationship here, or at least it doesn't look linear, which is why the product moment correlation coefficient hasn't come out as linear at all. So if, if the data that we have, the, any correlation doesn't actually look particularly linear, then Spearman's rank may, may be the way to go. Probably worth mentioning also that just because it may be a case that neither will um, show a connection, association or correlation. Well, notice here that there doesn't seem to be any kind of either ordinal kind of, there is a relationship, but neither Spearman's rank or the product moment correlation coefficient will pick it up. Uh, so even there may be, even when neither of these work, there may actually be a connection between the two. It may be neither ordinal nor, nor linear. So uh, that's something that's also wor worth bearing in mind. OK, so let's uh, just look in at when Spearman's rank might be appropriate uh, in particular. Let's just take this set out and start in a new set there. This particular set here, we can see that th there does seem to be a slightly linear association. They're more concentrated in the middle here. So hopefully... Um, the distinction between two those two sets of data is pretty clear. 
um, you're probably going to get a line of best fit when you're using it's probably going to be a linear a regressor line you're going to be able to draw particularly if the correlation is quite strong which it is here 0.95 and one of the indicators that uh, the that product moment correlation coefficient is this kind of elliptical shape that indicates it's bivariately normally distributed um, just a little bit more technical there it's a bit beyond the a level court a level further mass we got here but we can see nice little kind of 2d or 3d representation of a bivariately normally distributed here and here you have your elliptical shape and here is the the bivariate normal distribution in kind of 3d uh, 3d demonstration so the, strictly speaking we really need both bits to be normally distributed and to be connected in that way for product moment correlation coefficient to be appropriate so now let's have a look at a couple of exam questions and hopefully then um, we can kind of tidy this up and move on to other parametric tests in future videos okay so this question is about the product moment correlation coefficient the parametric test that uh, we're going to apply to this normally i find that students don't particularly struggle with getting with working out the product moment correlation coefficient but i'm going to do it anyway um quite a few easy marks to do and the formula given um some of you may have seen a formula uh, expressed in something called the covariance particularly if you're reading this from if you listen to this from overseas but we i don't we don't tend to talk about the covariance of two variables although it doesn't the formula is quite um convenient to it in that way in many ways the formula that we use is basically this square root of sxy over sxx square root of syy I prefer to think of it like that and then separate what the sxy and the sxx are sxy is equal to the sum of all of the xy's together take away the sum of the x sum of the y divided by the n bit i say that's the thing that's connected to the covariance but we're um we're not uh we're not really talking about that here um so sxy is equal to that so in this context we're given all the summary data here that will be three one six three four five from there take away the sigma x so that's the two three three one point three times by the sigma y which is a six seven two point four divided by the total number of data and the answer selects 50 days so that's divided by 50. so sxy equals to 2817.8 okay so then we can talk about syy that's equal to the sigma of y squared take away the sigma of y squared divided by n that's connected to the variance of y the, the single variable variance of y i think divide by n and we get the single variance but I say we we just I just prefer to just write it out that way. It's all all of this is given in the formula book. But as I say I would use I wouldn't try and do it in slot it into one big formula. Work out the individual bits there and then work and then use this over kind of arching formula at the end. Perhaps using memory on your calculator. So sigma y squared is nine two nine two one three six one. Take away sigma y all squared so that's six seven two four point three squared divided by 50 and that equals to one seven oh three six point eight okay and then finally ssx 
SXX is equal to sigma x squared take away sigma x all squared divided by n so that equals to sigma x squared is 111984 take away sigma x squared so that's 2331.3 squared divided by 50 and that comes to 3 to 3 to 84.8 okay so then we can put that into the over overall formula let me just tidy the screen up first bringing it to, all together we have r equals to sxy which is 2817.8 divided by the square root of sxx so that's 3284.8 times by syy which is 17036.8 and that gives us a product moment correlation coefficient of 0 0.377 not particularly strong but it doesn't look very strong from the diagram either so that seems to fit so now we're doing the hypothesis test which is the bit i want to really talk about here and just to say again this is a parametric test we're assuming the data is bivariately normally distributed so it is a parametric test but I, I, we're doing this in this section because i want to draw the distinction between that and the non-parametric version which is spearman's rank so um let's just set up the test remember we need to write out for a non-parametric test we can refer to the actual parameter the population parameter so the null hypothesis is that there is no correlation between the variables but don't write in symbols write in terms of our population parameter rho and rho not equal to zero we'll talk there's a question later about the fact that it's a two-tailed test but as far that as far as um the two-tailed thing come, goes in here as far as the exam question goes say uh, there may be a correlation and it hasn't specified any particular type of correlation but we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in our answer to question four but it's two-tailed here so um and we need to define what row is so where row is the population correlation coefficient So we don't know row, that's the point. We we know what R is, that's a 0 0.377, which is the correlation coefficient of the sample, but we don't know what row is, and we're making a hypothesis as to what it is. Okay, that there, that there is no correlation for the whole population, or that there is one for the alternative hypothesis. Um, we can see that for any when n for n equals fifty, we have a critical value five percent critical value. Let's have a look at our tables for this. These numbers are all derived derived from you know pretty uh, advanced maths. Did you know analysing um, the bivariate normal distribution? So we don't really need to go too far into where these numbers come from, but they're all based on the uh, the assumption of uh, bivariate normal distribution and these are the figures that are generated from that um, won't say anything more than that let's have a look with n equals 50 because quite a large sample size here at five percent correlation now here we've got for the two tail we've got five percent here okay we've got five percent here and we can see our critical value is 0 0.2787 okay 0 0.2787 so that's our critical value so the critical value is 
is equal to 0 0.2787. But we have our value of R, 0 0.377, being greater than the 0 0.2787. So although the pop, it doesn't look terribly, you know, strongly correlated, it does look that there is, does look like, like there is some form of uh, correlation here. So we, we reject H naught. And remember, as far as the examiner is concerned, they want a contextual statement. So there is sufficient evidence sufficient evidence to suggest there is a correlation between oil price and share cost. You need context. Use the use the question. And share cost. Okay, uh, okay, so the third question says an assumption that there is a bivariate normal distribution is required for this test to be valid. State whether it is a sample or population. Of course, it's the population. We need the population to be bivariately normally distributed. Um, obviously, we can't. We don't know what the population is. But if the sample looks like it's, um, you know, so in that feature, then that's good enough. So, but we we actually the assumption is that the population is bivariately no, normally distributed. If the sample shows features which might indicate that, that's that's all very good, but the actual assumption is that the population is bivariately normally distributed. It says state um, whether the sample or population is required. State whether reason whether in this case the assumption appears to be just justified, and it does appear to be justified. Okay, it's quite a, it's not particularly narrow ellipse, but it does look yes, it does look justified because it's a roughly. Um, it's the elliptical shape. If I wanted to go further, you won't need to in, if you're doing the further maths stats exam for either MEI or OCR. Um, you could say there's more concentration of values in the middle as well, but it's not required. Um, the elliptical shape kind of gets that mark. Okay, um, fourth question. Explain why a two-tailed test is appropriate, even though it is clear from the scatter graph that the sample has a positive correlation. Well, the point is that really we need to divide and we need to set up our hypothesis before we get the data or look at the data or collect the data or whatever. So we want to know what the shape of it would look like before. So it's all to do with what our starting point is. So it's not, it's basically because um, the null, the null and hypothesis test, null and alternative hypothesis, hypothesis should be decided before referring to, should be decided before before looking at And in many what times collecting sample data. Okay, um, that's it for that question. Okay, so let's do one more question. Uh, this time, the emphasis being on Spearman's rank, the non-parametric version of the test. Um, Okay, again, the formulae are given in the formula book, and it's not normally the formulae that students really um, fail to be able to apply and be able to do. Do It's normally the hypothesis testing interpretation where the um, things come in. It wouldn't ask for in the question, but I've plotted here a uh, 
a scatter graph of the data. Now here, I suppose you could argue that a parameter, and in fact they get you to do the product moment correlation coefficient later. Um, you could argue it's by not very normally distributed, but there isn't really much data to go on. You've got a couple of data here. And as I mentioned before, there isn't a high concentration in the middle. The coarsest approach here would be to do Spearman's rank, and that's where the question starts us off. So let's talk about Spearman's rank and how to calculate it first. First of all, we're going to need to rank the data. So let's rank X. Now, don't get too worried about which way around you go. So long as you're consistent, I'm going to put probably the put number one for the highest. So we're looking at X. So the highest there is 4.10. And then we can go through uh, the next highest is, in fact, they're all going like this, two, three, they're all going up, five, six, seven, eight nine ten nice and easily uh that one uh then with the rank of y we'll assign the highest to whichever is the highest which is a 4.4 .4. next highest is the 4.1 so that's two the next highest is the 3.4 or is it 3.5 here so that's three and then the next highest is the 3.4. So, so there's 4 there. The next highest is 3.3. So it's 5 there. And so on. We, want to, we, we need to work out the difference between those two. I should perhaps have said what the formula is. And this is given form. Uh, form formula for Spearman's rank is given to us. It goes, providing there is no tide ranks, that's important, and you won't get questions with tide ranks because it's not on the course. Um, so n squared minus once, providing there's no tide ranks, that's the formula we're going for, where d is the difference. Okay, now again, just to reiterate, so long as you're consistent with the order of these, that's fine. You'll get the same level of differences. Positives will become negative. Negative will become positive. But it'll be fine. Uh, but of course, if you you if you're not consistent, that will suggest that it will just basically change the size of everything, and it will make mess it up. So it has to be. Um, you have to be consistent with the order. So the difference between these two is four. The difference between these two is minus one. The difference between these two is five, zero, negative two, negative four, zero, negative two, one, and negative one. Let's uh, square these differences. So squaring the difference there, 16, let's just draw a line there. Uh, squaring the differences here, that's one, one square, negative one squared, 25, zero, four, 16, 0, 4, 1, 1. Summing all of those, adding all of those together, we get sigma d squared is equal to 68. So we can put those all into the formula. So that gives us the Spearman's rank coefficient is 1 take away 6 times by 68 over n, which is 10 times 10 squared minus 1 which is 99 so that gives us 0 0.588 to three significant figures okay so that is um that's our um spearman's rank i probably ought to have mentioned that if i was to apply the product moment correlation coefficient to those rankings I will it does I will get the same answer okay so that I will get the same answer if, if I was to apply the correlation coefficient to those but it's just quicker to do this way and it can be proved that if we apply the the formula I did up uh, up the page there those formulae that basically this is a shortcut if I was to apply those formulae to this data here I will get the same answer and that can be proved Maybe one day I will, so, but uh, let's get just cracking with this before that. Um, right, okay, so that's the first question.
Next question is to carry out a hypothesis test, or uh, 5% on these, to a test for association. Now, our syllabuses, and I think all the A-level syllabuses, do make this distinction between the vocabulary, what we mean by correlation and association. It may be that other in other fields or in other places around the world, the distinction between correlation and those two words isn't as as well defined, isn't as strict as it is with us. But we definitely say for the non-parametric version, we use the word association. And in this case, our uh, hypothesis will come in the form of words because we've got no population parameter. We don't know what the parent population is so we just say no association between x and y and obviously if there, this was a contextual question you would have to write what those variables were you can't say x and y but in this case there's no context so x and y is the only thing we can do and the alternative or hypothesis is that there's a positive association x and y if you want to know why we say in positive if we look out it says fairly clearly that there's a positive association so that's why we have a one tail test here so we need to look at the tables of critical values for spearman's rank sample size is 10 and we've got five percent one tailed so we're looking at the relevant value there, so that's 0 0.5636. So the critical value for n equals 10, one tailed, 5% equals to 0 0.5636. Now, since we have our value is 0 0.588, and that is greater than 0 0.5636, so it's greater than the critical value. So there is sufficient evidence. Uh, so we, we reject H0. there is sufficient evidence to suggest that there is a positive association between weight X and estimated Y. Without mentioning here that had the choice been for a two-tailed test, it wouldn't have, we would not be rejecting H0. If we look at the value there, for 5%, we would have 0 0.6485, and our value, uh, test statistic 0 0.588 is actually less than that so we would not be rejecting H0. So the choice is quite critical and it's quite controversial sometimes but remember we should decide before looking at data whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed and I suppose again the cautious approach is to go for two-tailed but you'd have to normally in the real world of stats you'd have to justify which one you're using particularly if you're if you're doing a one tail test why would you only look for uh, association or correlation in a particular direction that should be justified okay let's go on to the next part if we looked at the data as in uh, the original data we, we could i suppose argue that product moment correlation coefficient to the sample uh, is the way to go because it was bunched in a way so uh, they go on to get us to work that out. And we, since we've already done a question on that, I'll rush through this quickly. Remember, and these are given in the formally. You do not have to remember this, although if you do this enough times, you will remember it. That. So let's rush through this quickly. Sxy equals to sigma xy take away sigma x times by sigma y divided by n which equals to 106.51 take away 31.63 times by 33.1 divided by the total number 
10, which is 1.8147. X comes to 1.8743 and SYY which comes to 3.049 now slotting that into the formula for R R equals SXY over the square root of SXX times SYY so that comes to 1.8147 divided by the square root of these two here so that's 1.8743 times by 3.049 so that equals to 0 0.759 And now let's go on to the fourth part. Well, he, I've kind of alluded to this throughout this video is um, if we know that the thing is bivariate data, it's hard to say from the original histogram, from the original scattergram that it is for certain. But if we make that assumption, or if we know it is, it is definitely better to use it because obviously the the process of ranking loses information so the pmcc is better um, since it takes into account actual weights account actual weights and doesn't lose information And doesn't lose information through rank, through ranking, but that's only be if we assume it is bivariately normally distributed. So the question is kind of taken that uncertainty out of us by said it's by if the underlying population is a bivariate distribution. If we know that, then PMCC is better because we, we've got that. And then it says, comment briefly on the significance of the problem moment correlation coefficient in relation to that of Spearman's rank. Well, notice that the in this case, R is 0 0.759 and the Spearman's rank is 0 0.5636. But I think it's not really, that's not just the point here. If we look at the actual significance tables for the Spearman's rank uh, for the PMCC 0 0.759 remember the test was 5% and one tailed 5% and one tailed on, te on, a, uh, on a product moment correlation coefficient test 0 0.5498 Four is the critical value we, we've easily we've really got quite a, easily kind of got a significance there whereas the other one was much closer which leads to the point I've said before in an earlier in the earlier intro basically non-parametric tests are more likely to fail to spot something in other words more likely to do a type 2 error more likely to not reject H naught when it should have been rejected. So that doesn't mean there's no use, no point. There's really going to be our option in, in certain cases where we don't know what the parent distribution is like. And in this case, we can't assume it's bivariately normally distributed. So the comment we would make here is that um, the PMCC value is much higher than the critical value it's easier it um more comfortably if you like shown significance compared to Spearman's.
Okay, so I hope you found it useful. I wanted to do the two together just to kind of compare and compare the two. Again, I've probably said it time and time again, it's all about parametric and non-parametric. Uh, the non-parametric version is Spearman's rank. Doesn't assume anything about the parent population. Um, and the parametric version is PMCC, which assumes they're bivariately normally distributed, as is often the case with, bivari uh, with the choice between these two tests. If we can, it is often and normally is better to go for the parametric version because we're more likely to find something significant and something interesting. OK, I hope you found this tutorial useful and we will carry on with some more non-parametric tests in future videos. Thank you. Bye.